Hello, my friend and friends. Glassy effects like this one here, especially in dark modes these days, are all the rage. And there's a few interesting CSS tricks and things that we have to do to be able to make it happen. And that's what I want to be exploring with you today. So we're going to jump into some code where right now all I have is this. And that's giving me a card that looks like this right now. So I have done some styling on here already. If you'd like to follow along with me or see the code that we have right now, it is linked down in the description below. But I want to make this sort of agnostic to what I have here so you can do with whatever layout you have to be able to make this work. And we're going to walk through the different steps that are involved in making that type of effect really hit home because there's a lot of small details involved in it. So the very first thing that these always have is a border on them. And we're going to improve this border because uh, I do have border colors set up as custom properties. So I'm just going to come in with a var of border one and we're going to do one pixel solid for now. And in doing that, we can see I have a border coming on there. Let's just make it white now, actually, so we can really see it, though. I will say most of the time they are very subtle borders, but you want to see how like that does not look good, right? So we definitely want like a subtle border color coming in. Uh, again, if you want to see all of the code here, you can definitely get to it. But all the way at the top, you can see in my custom properties, there's like very close shades that are all coming in. And my borders are set up to use two of the very close ones right there. So yeah, lots of, there, it's been hard for my naming conventions lately because I find that it's going way beyond what I have because there's so many subtle shades that do happen when we're doing these types of effects. But we're, if you just stick a simple border on there like that, it's going to go a long way. And the other thing they often do is have some sort of gradient background instead of a solid background. We're gonna start with that and then eventually make it transparent and get the glassy effect. But we're gonna start by like sim the simplest approach first and then slowly level it up from there. Because I found on a lot of sites, especially if you have solid background colors, just throwing a background on here works really well. So uh, I'm gonna switch this one over to background color just cause that's what this one's gonna be. And then we're gonna replace that with a background image instead. And it depends a little bit on the style you're after, but I find most of the time on here, it is a radial gradient that does work really well. Uh, conic gradients could potentially be really nice here because you can get some really interesting effects with them. So to start with, I'm gonna use some bright colors because I find when you're using subtle colors, it can be hard to actually see where your circle is. So I'm just gonna do a red to transparent uh, to start with. So this is actually gonna take advantage of my color there. Uh, and when we do a red to transparent like that, it works, but it gets the ellipse shape to it, or it depends on the shape of the element. And often you don't want that. So I find with these, a lot of the time saying that it's a circle will help out uh, just because it makes it a perfect circle. But I also don't want that perfect circle to be right in the middle like this. We want to sort of push it off to one of the sides. Some places will keep it centered and more toward the bottom. And you can't even do like an at center bottom for this type of thing because then like the gradient is starting in the middle and working its way up. And so I find like when I'm doing these types of things, instead of doing at center bottom, I actually use the percentages. So if you have a 50%, 50%, it will be right in the middle. And then we can move this 100% and it's gonna be the middle there. So I might even go to like 150 or 200 or 300%, something like that to really push it down just to get the edge of the gradient. And then, as I said, I wouldn't do a red color here. I would come in with something a bit different. So here you can see my background color is surface two. So that means here I might do just my var surface surface. I'm just gonna do the one so we have a bit more prominent. And it's really hard to see, but my bottom is darker now than the top. And I might actually inverse these a little bit, one and three, because that's usually how we see it happening. And now I'm just getting like that light, a little bit of lighter color toward the bottom. And if we switch this over to a one, just so you see it goes completely black. So it's actually or almost black. It's actually highlighting that like this color here, which is the same as the top. So you get a really subtle gradient going on. These are really, really common, maybe a little bit more than this. Uh, pushes you in the right direction. Now, along with that, one of the problems with this, and I'm actually gonna make this one a little bit lighter just to highlight even more. So I have like a primary, let's try my primary 500 here, which should be quite a bit lighter. There we go. Uh, and the problem that can happen with this is the border color gets thrown off a little bit when you do this. So if you do have a border color like I'm doing right now, it won't give you quite what you're after. So instead of creating my border this way, <laughs> this is something I've been doing so much lately, but it's actually taking the color and making it transparent. And if you've never seen this type of trick before, or because of that, you might not have, I'm gonna make this 10 pixels. So it actually becomes like a really big border. And just to say it's red, you can see it's red there. We make it transparent. And now we have a transparent border and you can see it's kind of weird at the top and the bottom because it's actually repeating the gradient where the border was uh, previously. 
So where I have my background here, uh, or we'll keep it this way. I was gonna do the shorthand instead, but we'll keep it with the longhand. And what I'm going to do is actually come here and add a second background image. And for this one, I'm gonna do a linear gradient. And sometimes radial's better, uh, or changing the angle of it, it really depends on the design. We're gonna go with a pretty simple one here though. So I'm gonna do, once again, let's just do a red to blue so it really stands out. And now what we actually want is this one to be behind the other one. And this will make a bit more sense in a second, but I just wanted to make sure we could see it at the beginning because when I move it behind, we're not gonna see it. Uh, and I'm just gonna make sure that I do have a comma here at the end instead of a semicolon. So if we take a look at that entire thing, I have my background image with my radial gradient first. So this is the color I want to be the background of the entire card. And then I have this one here, which is gonna be my border gradient. And to be able to make that into a border gradient, we're gonna come in with a property called background origin. And background origin, if you don't know what it is, it allows you to sort of tell the element where it's going to be, uh, or where the background lives, and what areas of the box model it's allowed to occupy. So in this case, the one on the outside, so my radial gradient, I only want that one to be in my padding box. And then the second one, the linear gradient, I want that to fill up all the way to the border box. In doing that, you might've seen a small change happen over here, but we're gonna do one more thing before we go to take a look to understand what's happening, where I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna change this over to be a background clip right there. And now if we go take a look at it, you're gonna see there's actually sort of a border coming around there. And one of the reasons it's just a border is because we do have the transparent here. So I'm gonna replace this color with this two times. So it's just from one color to another makes it a solid color. Uh, and if we go and take a look at it, we get the solid color coming in and then the other one as the border. The origin is important here because if I didn't have my background origin on here, what would happen is let's take this off and hit save. What's actually happening is this linear gradient is going into that border area, but bo the gradients or background images repeat underneath borders usually, because usually the border would cover it so they don't want it clipping things. So by telling the origin that we're going there, it just makes sure that the gradient takes up that entire space. And then the background clip is important because that's actually clipping it to that area. So this full one, which is our background, this one here, this radial gradient that's right here, it's saying that by doing a background clip of padding box, it's not allowed to live outside of the padding box. So the two of them together allow that to happen. And it's kind of annoying having to write both of these. So if we actually take this away from being a background image to a background, and then we take both of these off, at the end of the radial, we can actually say this is my padding box. And at the end of my linear gradient, we can say this is my border box and hit save and it's exactly the same. Because when we use the background shorthand, if you write these at the end there, it actually ends up being the shorthand for both of them. So it sets them both up and it's a little bit faster. And so with that, we can actually, now we can't use a transparent background here because it just won't work obviously, but I could just come in with my surface one like I was using before uh, as one of my colors there. And we can get that subtle, more, you know, the more subtle gradient coming in. Uh, and then here instead of a 10 pixel border, we can do a one pixel and instead of the red blue, we can replace this with a uh, border one. And then this can be my var border two and I can hit save. And now I get this very subtle gradient coming down and getting a little bit darker towards the bottom versus the color at the top. And again, sometimes you wanna change the angle of these or play with them a little bit, but you'll often see this where they either get darker or lighter or at an angle or something like that, where it has these shifts on the color and the intensity of the border. And this is one of the ways we can do it. There's a few other ways you can actually accomplish this type of thing, but I feel like this one actually works pretty well. Or of course, it works pretty well if you don't care about not seeing the background. And for a lot of use cases, again, if you have a solid background on your site, this is perfectly fine and you can probably stop right here and you're good to go. But if you have different things going on in the background, maybe it's even just a gradient or you have something that you want that real glassy effect, we can't use this then because this sort of falls apart at this stage, uh, though we're going to be using this technique, but just in a little bit of a twist in how we're actually going to do it using masks and some interesting things with them. So if you really want that glassy effect where you can sort of see through it, um, yeah, we, we can't do it like that. So we're actually going to now remove this and I'm, I'm gonna keep this here and just comment it out. 
Uh, so we're going to comment that one out just because that's sort of like version one. <laughs> and then we're going to come in here with version two, where we're going to take this background completely off and we're going to get started. And for this one, actually, we don't want a border on there either. We're going back to just having a normal card that doesn't even have a background on it. It has a completely transparent background. So you don't have to declare anything on there, at least to start with. And this one's going to rely heavily on uh, pseudo elements. So we're going to come in and we're going to say that this has a position of relative now. And with that there, uh, I'm gonna use nesting, or no, we won't use nesting, it's simple enough. We can just come in and say, we're gonna do a before on here. And we're gonna use a position, position of absolute for this. And that's why I'm putting a position relative here is just so this becomes the containing block for this pseudo element. And then we're gonna do a, let's give this a content because we need to have content or the element won't exist. And we're going to come in with an inset of zero, which is a top, bottom, left, and right of zero. And we'll give it a background for now of, let's try, I don't know, steel blue, just so we have a color on there that we can see. We can see right away there's a problem. It's on top of our content. So we can come here and say this also has a Z index of negative one to push it behind the content. And lastly, for the border radius, you could do a overflow of hidden over here, but I tend, just because sometimes you want that, and if you need that, that's fine. But a lot of the time on pseudo elements that I wanna fill up the entire space, I just come here and do a uh, border radius of inherit. And I find that works really well, because then if I change it on the parent, it changes on the child, uh, and we're good. Now, we don't want it to look like this, right? We, we need to do a little bit more with this, so I'm actually gonna use the same trick that we did before, and we're really leaning on what we did before, so I'm gonna go a little bit faster now, just for these parts that are a bit of a, a repeat. And let's do a bit bigger again, we'll do three pixels maybe. Solid, transparent for the border, and then what we're going to do is come in with a background color on here again. So instead of having this background color, because that's going to sort of get in the way and we won't be able to see what we're doing, I'm going to go up here and just grab this linear gradient we already created, because this is going to be perfect for what we need. And we're going to come down and we're going to paste that over here for the background. Or I commented this out. We don't need to comment that out. We can just replace it with that uh, border that we already had and hit save. And it's doing the job of like being where we want it to be. And even we're gonna, I'm gonna make the second one red here again, just to really highlight how this is working before we turn it down um, and, and make it a little bit more subtle. But now what I wanna do is I, I, I wanna hide this, right? I, I don't wanna be able to see that except on the outside area of it. And there's other ways we could have done this, um, but I find this is the easiest one by having the transparent border and leaning into the same trick that we learned before, but using a mask instead. And masks are really cool and they're really underutilized. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is a linear gradient. This could be any type of gradient, it doesn't matter. And we're just going to put anything. I'm just gonna write black. It could be red for saving characters. And I'm in Chrome, so I could actually leave it this way and just write border box. Watch this, border box, hit save and nothing changes yet. Uh, actually, let's make this one, this is black. Let's just make it HSL 0, 0, 0, which is black. And then we're gonna do over 0.5. And no, see how we're getting some transparency come in here? And the way a mask works is if the alpha value of a color is solid, you can see whatever is there. If it's 0.25, we're going down to, a, like we're basically dropping the opacity of this to 0.25. This might seem a little bit strange <laughs> to do this, but I wanna keep this at just like HSL of black. I just want it to be black. The reason for that is I want on the outside, the border box to stay, like I, I wanna keep that trick, right? Where we're saying the border box area, we want it full opacity, but then we're gonna come in with a second mask. And the second mask is, again, we can do a linear gradient of black uh, for this one, but we're gonna do padding box now. And so we have these two overlapping masks. We do need a comma in between the two of them. And so we end up with two masks and this might seem a little bit weird. Like why would you want two masks like this? But if you have multiple masks, you can, if you're used to like illustrator where you have like subtraction, addition, the weird, bl not blending modes really, but no, if you have two shapes on top of each other and then you can hit those tools that do stuff, um, combine the shapes in different ways. We can do that with masks with mask composite. And in this case, I want to subtract the two masks from each other. So subtract. This is basically saying I have these two gradients and the only thing that's determining their size is this because one's on a border box and one's on a padding box or they're not gradients necessarily. It's just when you use mask, it has to be an image. So the easiest way to create that image is with a gradient right now. And so, yeah, I have my 
bit solid shape here, solid shape here. One of them's three pixels bigger than the other one because of the border box versus my padding box. And then I subtract those two and it just keeps the part where they weren't overlapping. So cool. <laughs> and so I end up getting that border coming through like this. Now, obviously I don't want that color there. So I'm gonna switch uh, this one here to my var uh, border two. And you get that you can see that it's lighter at the top and then darker down at the bottom. I can switch this border over to be one pixel. And what I would recommend if you're doing something like this, uh, just because if you know somebody comes along this or you come across this later on, you might not think of looking here to know this is what's actually creating the border. So you could always do that as a custom property of border width uh, being one pixel. And then here just doing your var border width because this is a lot to basically recreate having a border right <laughs> and so there we go though we have the border going around it's nice and subtle which is exactly what we want this effect is a lot about the subtlety of the color differences and things like that now we do want to come in and actually bring a background color in here but first just before i do that um what i did here where i did a single color gradient stop this is only supported in chrome right now in the future we'll hopefully have better browser support but you can just put a zero zero here and then that will get it working in all browsers so i'm just going to do that there and here uh, and that should help with browser support if you still do run into issues you could always do a black black and a black black or whatever color you choose it really doesn't matter as long as it's a solid color uh, and you'll be completely fine so we're just making a solid color it could even be like a black red it really doesn't matter so i'll, I'll leave it black black for now um, just to say that we need that for better browser support eventually we'll have single color gradient stops in all of them, which just saves us a little bit of headache of having to duplicate colors for solid things. But let's get back to that image here, uh, or the color here. I'm gonna show you a cool modern CSS trick that we can use that doesn't have the greatest browser support, so there are easier ways to do this, of course. Uh, but we could come in with my background, and in this case, we need it to be transparent. So I could come in with like an HSL. I probably want you know to use one of my colors. So I do have Windows Power Toys. I'm just gonna grab this color that I have as this dark background color. And we'll grab that as an HSL and paste that in here. So we have my HSL coming in. So if I did that, we just get a solid black, but then I could come here and say, this is at like 0.5% or something. And we start getting it to be a bit more transparent. Uh, this is one of the annoying things of working with custom properties, right? When you have HSL values and you want to lower the opacity of one of them, you sort of have to make a lower opacity version of them uh, or just do like I did just now. Now with modern CSS, and again, this is watch your browser support because it's not perfect for this yet, but it's not bad. Relative Colors has pretty good browser support. I'll put a link uh, in the description to the, ta the browser support table for this. But what we can say is I want an HSL value that is from my var and that would my darkest one would be my surface one. And then I'm gonna do HSL. So my hue, my saturation, my lightness will all stay the same, but I'm gonna do a forward slash 0.5 and we get the exact same result. Just to show you, if I put this to one solid, if I put this to a 0.2, it's at 20%. And already it looks with that border coming on there in the background, it's looking all right, but it is missing one thing, which is that we want a back drop filter of our blur. And this just really hammers home that glassy effect where we blur whatever is behind it. Uh, I'm also gonna put an article to a Josh Como article that looks at a better way <laughs> of doing this. It's a little bit more of a complex setup uh, than just doing a simple one like this. It involves clip paths and a bit more, but it makes it for a little bit of a better effect if you have scrolling and other things going on. But for what we're doing here today, uh, I think this is perfect. And we can just play with this number. Maybe I wanna lighten the card up a little bit. Depends what you're after and you know how opaque or how not opaque you want it. And relative colors make that oh so very easy to do. And if you like learning about this effect, you actually learned a lot of the things that you need to know how to do, minus a couple of neat little tricks along the way, how to do this glowing border effect that follows a gradient and stuff that I think also looks pretty cool. So if you'd like to see that, you can watch this video right here. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.